Morning Reads has been giving you a chance to get involved online with Bishop T.D. Jakes and his best-selling book. It's called Let It Go, Forgive So You Can Be Forgiven. The book, by the way, is published by Simon & Schuster. That's a division of CBS, and Bishop T.D. Jakes is back. Welcome back. Thank you. It's good to see you. Reading. We, of course, are going to talk about your book, but first I want to start with the Pope. The resignation of the Pope, because most people think the words Pope and resign do not belong in the same sentence. So when you first heard it, we'd love to know your thoughts and reaction. I was astounded by it, a, a little bit surprised by it, and, and don't know anything other than the information that we've all heard about it, but it was, it was quite shocking. Mm -hmm. Because? Yeah. Well, I think it was shocking because we haven't seen it for 600 years or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but then it is indicative of the times we live, that people are doing things in new ways and new capacities, and I take it at face value based on what we know so far. Mm -hmm. We all talk about ecumenicalism, you know, the notion of religions uh, coming together. Where is the, what's the status of that today? Catholic, Protestant, I, I think uh, we come together around common needs and common issues, but the distinctions are very, very important uh, to the uniquenesses of our faith. And I think there are some things that bring us all together, uh, regardless of our faith or our belief systems, a common good for humanity, taking care of the poor, responding to people in crisis. But then the unique nuances are a part of our distinctives, and I don't think that it will ever fully change, ever. Mm -hmm. Your book, Let It Go, Forgive So You Can Be Forgiven. Last time you were here, you said unforgiveness unchecked becomes a cancer in your soul. What's the danger in not forgiving? It's so hard for so many people. Oh, I think it leads to all kinds of things, stress and pressure. Uh, you start carrying today's issues while you're still holding on to yesterday's issues. You can only hold so much. And at a certain point, you're overwhelmed and don't even know why. Mm -hmm. You have to let things go so that you are available for the challenges of today. Mm -hmm. We have a, a viewer question who writes, my parents have been divorced for over 30 years but still refuse to be in the same room. They've supposedly forgiven one another, yet won't put aside their feelings for the sake of their children or grandchildren. By those standards, does forgiveness therefore mean to completely cut someone out of your life? Well, that's not really forgiveness. I think sometimes you have to rise to the bigger picture and see the welfare of your children and your family. Uh, there are some couples that go through a divorce and get along better after the divorce than they do before. Mm -hmm. And that is when you prioritize the, the, the whole idea of family and children above the individual circumstances that led to the divorce. Mm -hmm. The second question, I love this question. What if you forgive someone, but someone refuses to forgive you? The, you know, that's that's a very good question because a lot of times people <laughs> think that forgiveness is based on the other person. It really is not. This is totally about you. Uh, it does not exonerate the perpetrator. It doesn't uh, restore the relationship. It just says, I'm not going to carry the burden of, of this unforgiveness inside of me. And it has nothing to do with whether you reciprocate it or not. This is about liberating yourself. But it's so Does hard the to Bible speak to this? Oh, over and over and over again. <laughs> or is this just you, know? you talking? No, 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 no. No, but the funny thing about What did about Jesus it, say about yeah, forgiveness? Yeah, he says to forgive 70 times yeah. 70. And, and with 70 times 70, what he's really saying is to perpetuate a methodology whereby you let things go so that you are free. It's not the literal number that he's after, but getting in the process of releasing things so that you're available for what's in front of you rather than what's behind you. Mm -hmm. Do you find you have to change your message to go with the times? I don't think you change the message as much as you change the method. Mm -hmm. I think uh, communication has changed so drastically, even in the last few years. Uh, it's not always about uh, speech patterns as much as concise ideologies, per per particularly yeah. because of social media. People are receiving, ingesting and digesting information differently than they did even 10 years ago. One question coming out of the discussion going on at the Vatican and, and about the future of the church. They say there's a lot of competition between the Catholic Church and ecumenical churches um, and fundamentalist churches uh, in Africa and in other parts of the uh, of the world like that. Is that true? Well, it's absolutely true. In third world countries, there's a, certainly a resurgence of faith, and uh, the Roman Catholic Church is probably stronger in third world countries than it is some of the more progressive countries right now. And yet there's a, there's a convergence of ideologies. We have such a smorgasbord of information being inundating us now. We have so many options right. that years ago we didn't have. It's a whole different ballgame than what it was 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, television, so, social media yeah, yeah. puts everything in front of you now. Mm -hmm. All right, Bishop T.D. Jakes. Always good to have you. Thank here. you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And you can go to cbsthismorning.com to read excerpts from Let It Go. You're watching CBS This Morning. Be right back.